Hey, this video is for people who want to get started in property investing or have already looked into it and want to scale that bit faster or go that bit further. So in this video, I want to give you the six steps that have proven time and time again of what it takes, not just to get started, but actually make sure that you get results, you have fun along the way and you make real money. Because there's a lot of times where people start and they don't really do that. So these six steps, Make sure you note them down. I'm going to go through every single one for you. So my name is Mark Harvey. Over the last 10 years, I've built several multi-million pound companies and I love the construction industry. I love property developing. I'm a property developer. I have a construction company. We've done millions of pounds of projects, built millions of pounds of port property portfolio, hundreds of thousands of pounds of cash flow each and every single month and I taught hundreds of other people to do the same. So in this video, these six steps are very vital. The first one is maximizing your strategy. So there's various different strategies when it comes to property investing, or investing at all, but we're talking about property right now. And you've got to maximize it. What does that actually mean? That means what's the strategy that's going to give me the maximum impact for me to achieve the goals that I want? You see, people don't even ask that. I mean, we're saying step one here, but really step before that is like, what, my, what is it that I'm doing it for? What do I want to achieve? What's my milestone goals, whether it's financial, whether it's to be with my family, whether it's to travel, whether it's to start another business, and I want to be able to have or generate some income that I'm in control of. Because most people, they worry or they turned a blind eye to that their uh, income is controlled by somebody else. Where in property investing, the great thing and what I love about it and what hundreds and thousands of other people love about it is you're in control of your own business and, and the income that you're making. So maximizing your strategy. So whether it's buy to let, so buy to let is just very simply having like a family type home where uh, you're gonna be owning that house, you buy, and then you're gonna let it to someone, yeah? Uh, I'm going to be, by the way, I'm going to be breaking these down. I'm going to give you the highlights here, so for what it takes to actually get started, but I'm also going to be breaking it down in, an, in a video series. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of them because I'm going to give you to them in order and you'll be able to find them there on this channel. Yeah, so the first one is buy to let. We've got another one which is called HMO. What's this? This is houses of multiple occupancy. Now, that term came from initially taking like a building and, and, and creating separate units where you would rent out the room separately. We have like jumped that strategy up and, and now HMO isn't just like what, 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 like back in the olden days, whenever that was, yeah, people would just use bed sits. So put a lock on the door, a bed in the room and call it a room. Yeah, that just don't cut the mustard these days. We've put that on steroids and it's not just like double on suite rooms. It's also studios. It's even morphing into uh, apartments as well. So people have that luxury, secure accommodation. Yes, uh, a lot of people use HMOs for student accommodation, groups of students that want to live together when they're going to university, but also, and, and a large part of our strategy is uh, professionals, you know, so these may be when it comes down to contractors or professionals that get like, uh, you know, six months, 12 months contracts when, you know, their job asks them to move to a different location. Also, we have something called rent to rent. Now, what this means is you don't even have to own the property. You can just control the property and you take on an agreement where you pay a, a landlord or whoever owns the property a fixed amount of rent and then you uh, are going to rent it out for more so you make it a more superior product and then that gap in there is your profit. Some people also do like they do rent to HMO so like they're taking someone's uh, HMO uh, that is probably substandard, needs, you know, upgrading. They'll invest some money into it and then make a bigger rent. So, like, you, you need very little money. You, you, in fact, you don't even need any money of your own. I started with zero of my own money and, and built a portfolio of over eight million in just about three and a half years. For the first six million, I use zero of money. Yeah, and there's other videos on this channel as well, so make sure you check them, check them out. Uh, people also do rent to service accommodation. So that's another strategy as well. Service accommodation is like the things you'll find on Airbnb, booking.com, uh, that's not a hit, not a hotel, but it's like a service, like a, when you go to a hotel, like it's serviced accommodation, it's already serviced, everything is already there for you. Yeah, this is similar, but like it's more long-term. Again, lots of contractors, people who wanna stay in groups, 
Uh, they find it more cost effective and actually, you know, better as well if they don't want to be like in a ma mainstream hotel, especially if it comes to pricing as well. So the demand for this is absolutely rife. And if you can take someone's property and turn it and know how to turn it into a service accommodation, that gap between what you pay them and what you're going to get in rent is huge. And people are making lots and lots of money. In fact, a project that we just uh, finished, the gross rent across seven units is nearly 300k, it's like 296,000 uh, pounds. So you can see the gross rents there are absolutely huge. Let me list you some other strategies here. So we've got flips, which is buying and selling. We've also got development. So doing new builds or doing commercial to residential as well. We've also got, uh, like we do it flats. So this is great. And it actually com com can combine like the selling, the buying and the selling and also the renting as well, because you could sell some of the flats or you could, and then you can rent some of them. So like you can make capital lump sums of money if you like big lump sums of cash, or you can get recurring monthly income as well. So why is it important to know what all these strategies are? Because by the way, there's, there's many of them, and I will be breaking them down in different videos like more in more detail. Uh, why is it important? Why is it important? Because they all, like the, the reason you're picking your strategy in the first place is what's your goal? People want to contribute to society in different ways. It's not all just about money. I mean, can you make money? Yes, lots of it, millions. But like, it's not the, what the money you're making, it's why you're making it. So all of these different strategies, even like social housing st strategies, you know, providing uh, uh, assisted living accommodation, all of this, is like, what's the strategy that's gonna give you the maximum impact for you to achieve your goals? Yeah, so it might be an income initially, people don't wanna make that income, but then they want a level of freedom. So like, how can I set my property business up based on the strategy I've got to work for me? So, so I can go and travel. I don't have to have my phone on me all the time, like in my face, you know, uh, seeing to things. It can run it by itself. Now that is why that step is so important. Step two, is once you know your strategy is then what area? So I need to find my area on the map of where are these strategies already working is the best thing. You know, there's all these technical ways to work out like what is the in the area, the average wage, what would someone buy a house for, what would someone rent it for? If you, like, you can go do that if you wanna do that, but just go find somewhere that's already these strategies are working. Why wouldn't people do that? Because they think it's saturated. When I first started in, in property in this area, yeah, I thought, you know, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna start investing in Wales, and we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go to different countries. Very quickly, we became so um, you know, active with so many different properties, with, with, like within an hour radius, that there was no need to go anywhere else. It's like a ladding's cave, I promise you. So you gotta find somewhere where it's already working, uh, with that strategy, uh, and then the, you're gonna start to see now how they all link together. Step number three is finding the deals. Now you know the area, now you've gotta find the deals. How can you do this? Check out in the description, there's a link that I'll give you an entire training on just finding deals. It's like the deal finding secrets. Yeah, and it'll show you how to do that in you know, no time and how you can find deals in less than 20 minutes a day. Because people are like, oh, you know, I've got a full-time job, I've got kids and all the rest of it, how can I find deals? I'm just looking on Rightmove, looking on Zoopla. Look, I'm gonna show you a way that once you refine it, 20 minutes a day, you can find as many deals as you're gonna need. Like, like, like right now, we've got lists and lists of deals that we are like backlogged with how many deals that we're uh, buying, investing in, selling on to other people. The, uh, like other people like want deals, so like we give them to them and then we'll do the construction work. Uh, there's so many deals that we've got. So finding deals is an awesome part of this process. So you've got to get that nailed down as well. Like, so when it comes to finding deals, it will depend on what your strategy is. You know, so if someone wants to flip and, and sell and get big lump sums of cash, what you're looking for is you're looking for the gap. What is the biggest gap I can create from what I'm gonna buy it for, the cost to actually then convert it, and then what I can sell it for. So you always start with the end in mind when you're finding the deals, and I'm gonna talk about numbers, and we've got a load of other videos, and this video series will teach you and take you through that journey. But like, you got the end in mind is like, what's the gross development value? When it's finished, when it's all done, converted, what's that GDV? 
And then I will work backwards to say, well, okay, if I'm going to sell it for that much, then um, it's going to cost me this much to convert it into whatever I'm doing. So that means I've got to buy it at this price. And that's what you're looking for. I'm looking for the most dirtiest, stinkiest, smelliest properties when it comes to that strategy. Okay, step number four. So in this step, this is all about working the numbers, working out the numbers. What, here's some key numbers that you need to know. So first of all, you're going to need to know what is your gross development value. So when I've, fin when I've finished, yeah, what, like when it's done up, whatever you want to call it, whatever terminology you want to use, but common is GDV. So whether you're renting, you're going to want to know that because you're going to want to refinance it at the end. And if you're selling it, you're going to want to know what, like, what a property is selling for. Another uh, number that is super important is what we call the money in, money out figure. What is that? That's the money that's being invested in because I need to know, like, is all of my money going to come back out when I refinance it? Which means then I have infinite return. And we'll go in more detail in a different video on that. But literally, you can get infinite returns. People are like, oh, can I get 5% in my bank? No, you get 0.01% in your bank. So how can I make 10%, 5%, 15%, 20%? We've got deals, uh, not that we're just doing ourselves, that many other people are getting 100 160%, 200% return on their money. Yeah, but then also have an infinite return. So all the cash flow, because there's no money left in the deal. So you're going to need to know your money in, money out figure. Another figure you're going to need to know is cash flow. You're going to need to know after all my expenses to do with that project on a monthly basis, how much cash flow am I left with? This is like the net profit to do with that property, not your business. And again, you know, doing things through a business, being more tax efficient. There are some more advanced things that we do and we, that we teach about because that again, like being tax efficient, by the way, is an income. I'll just give you a quick one right now. Imagine your tax bill, yeah, because you're not very efficient, is 100K and you reduce it to 50K. You just made 50K, yeah? Robert Kiyosaki said it first. That's where I heard it. He said, being tax efficient is an income. You know, when you know how to, to play that game, and totally above board and be legal, by the way, obviously, then it is another stream of income that you can have. Step number five is getting offers accepted. Now, again, I mentioned in the previous step of finding deals. That wasn't just finding the deals. I was actually showing you how you get the offer accepted as well. So I strongly recommend deal finding secrets. Make sure you find the link or you know, reach out to someone that you can see you know, from, our, from our media channels or message. Uh, getting offers accepted is super important because when people are out there and they're going viewing hundreds of properties all over the place, I mean, I just had someone message me the other day saying, you know, my husband has been viewing hundreds of properties but not getting anywhere. It's because they don't know the steps and the sequence to make sure you get this offer accepted. Now, I'm going to do another video in this video series to break that down a little bit further, but I strongly recommend Deal Finder Secrets because you'll see me do it right there live and you can follow me for that process, but it's in that video. It's all been you know, put together for you. Yeah, so when it comes to getting offers accepted, by the way, and something that a lot of people miss is that they're, all they're interested in is getting the best deal for them. Yeah, so that can cause a big problem. Number one is you're not seeing it from their point of view. And it's like two things can happen. Either you're going to break the relationships and no deals are ever going to come your way or they don't take you seriously. Or they might accept something that they were reluctant to accept. So all that has to happen is someone else comes sniffing around wanting to buy that property. And then that's it. There's no loyalty to you whatsoever. So to get an offer accepted and to be able to follow the entire process through and even if someone comes around they stick with you and are loyal to you so you're not wasting your time your money your resources uh, you've got to come up with a deal that works for both people I mean we've paid over asking price before everyone's talking about below market value deals 20% discount all the rest of it I don't want to buy a deal for the best deal that also works for them as well and if that just so happens that it's above the asking price because there is a little bit of other people sniffing around the deal i will go and do that why because the property still works for me i'm not here to be greedy and rip people off i'm here to make it work yeah and i know when that happens and in fact on a, on a property uh, we were doing and converting into a six bed HMO, the neighbor seeing what a good job we were doing and actually then also said, hey, listen, he was actually terminally ill, you know, bless him. 
And he said, you know, when I'm gone, uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, my children sell the property to you. And actually, I'm going to be going there a little bit later today because that property is now finished. So listen, when you do the right thing for the right reason, things start happening for you and they start coming your way. Step number six is raising finance. Now, this is, a pe this is a part that people misunderstand. Either they're just not into it at all and they, just, they don't even want to get it because they have to forget everything that they learned before. You know, cash is king and all of that. Listen, you know, people are like, I don't want to get into debt. Debt is money. You know, you'd use this money to exchange and get something in return. Debt can be the same thing. You're doing it anyway for your house for your cars, for the, for the leases, for your buy now, pay laters, for your credit cards. You're taking the money and you're exchanging it and then you're paying the debt though uh, and you're paying like, the like there's a leverage and the bank is winning. This time around, using investments, uh, wh like whatever it is, but we're talking about property right now, but I, I, do, I use the same principle for buying businesses as well. And what we do is we will leverage the bank's money and then well, obviously at the end of it, the property is going to be paying down the mortgage. So I'm not paying the interest, the cash flow of that business or that property is paying down the mortgage. But then I'll also raise investor finance. So people who have money sitting in the bank and you'll be massively surprised of how many people do. You're probably one of them. Yeah. And it's wasting away. I mean, the current time of, of recording this video, the inflation is set to be 5%. That means if you had, how many we got here? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80,000. If you had 80,000 pounds, dollars, whatever, in your bank, by next year, it's 5% less spending power. It's worth 5% less. Yeah, and, and that's a big wake-up call. Like, it's just sitting in your, like, what are you saving it for, a rainy day? Like, you've got to get your money working for you. And people know that, and they're starting to know that, which is why they want to invest in the deal. Whose deals do they want to invest in? people who know what they're doing, people who have been trained, people like you who are sitting here right now, putting the time, the effort in. Yeah, so what you can do is give them a return on their money or there's ways and strategies, which we will be breaking down further, of how that once the money is invested into the deal, what then happens is we increase the value by converting it, adding space, adding rooms, refinance it at a higher rate and then once we get that refinance, the bank's going to give us more money because the property's worth more. You buy a £100,000 house, they probably give you 75000 If you buy you know, a million pound house, they'll probably give you 750000 Does that make sense? So now they're giving us more money. So now we can pay back the investors, pay back the initial loan to the bank that we bought the property in the first place with and pay all of our costs. Now we own the property. We get the cash flow every month, and even, so in some cases, you get money on top because, like, uh, you know, there's other videos that are on this, ch this channel, but to give you an example, all the money in was about 140K, and the money out was like 183. So that, we paid 140K back to everybody, and the, the money that was left was just ours, you know, cash to then go use and get it working again. So raising finance is absolutely wonderful thing to do. And there's very simple steps and easy thing to do um, to make sure that you can start getting people interested in your deals and interested in wanting to work with you. Because again, it's just adding value to everybody. Why would someone have their money sitting in their bank when it can be making them more money for them doing nothing? Hey, if you want to see more value, you want to keep me doing this, I've got to grow this channel. How can you help me do that? You can subscribe, you can like it, you can comment, you can share it to someone else. So please go ahead and do that and uh, the channel will reach more people and the more people I reach, the more videos I will keep doing. If you have any suggestions or any questions of what you want, put that in the comments, reach out to us, let us know and we'll deliver that to you as well. And never forget that you always got to do the right thing for the right reason because that's the only way you discover your true potential.